Good morning, Keto family. Um, today, I will be doing another five Keto questions answered. And I know it's been uh, a week or so uh, since I've done one. I've had other things going on, but uh, I am still getting lots of questions about, uh, you know, common things that people ask uh, regarding Keto and uh, where should they should start and what they need to do and specific questions. So I'm back with much needed answers to these questions. So these are gonna be sort of short and sweet. Uh, so if you want more info on any specific topic, please just leave your uh, question for me in the comments and I will get back to you and respond. Okay, so question number one, um, why can't I have grains? So things like bread, rice, pasta, um, because they're so healthy for us, so we're told. The short answer is no, they're not. Uh, whole grains as well as refined grains are just a starchy mess and cause massive amounts of inflammation, especially in our joints. Um, that's the short answer. Um, they include things like barley and rice. It's not just bread, it's quinoa, oats, wheat, millet, bulgur, uh, farro, spelt. I mean, there's a huge list. Um, if you are confused about what a grain is, then you can Google it. Uh, if you have a specific one in mind and don't know if it's a grain or not, just Google it. Um, so symptoms of grain-related issues, like I said, um, can be, uh, you know, joint inflammation, brain fog, constipation, uh, they make you crave, they've been associated with depression, fatigue, uh, gut inflammation, liver disease, rashes, I mean, muscle pain, there's just too many to go through them all. So grains are a no. Question number two. two. Uh, what is this whoosh effect I keep hearing about? Um, you know, that, that goes around in the keto groups a lot is this whole whoosh thing. So very simply, I won't get into all the science of it, but very simply, a whoosh occurs when the fats that are in your fat cells are broken down and moved out being replaced by water. So after a few days, um, the water in these cells gets released and this results in a loss of sometimes three to five pounds in people, sometimes more in some people. Uh, so there's science involved. <laughs> A lot of science involved that I have not explained here, but uh, if you'd like to know more, of course, you can either Google it or ask me. Question number three. Is there a better time of day to eat carbs? So we try to stay under 20, of course, 20 grams per day. Uh, some people are higher. Some people try to keep it closer to zero. But if I'm going to eat carbs, uh, is there a better time of day to do it? So yes, there is. It has a lot to do with our body, uh, the chemistry going on in our body when we sleep overnight. I'm not going to get into that here. Uh, just remember that when you wake, you are, number one, highly insulin sensitive in the morning. Also, your cortisol is elevated in the morning. And so is your blood glucose. Um, eating carbs early on in the day can result in issues that are not terrible, but might result in having stalls and whatnot. So you will um, elevate your glucose and your insulin more if you eat carbs in the morning. You'll have kind of an ongoing hunger through the day, even though you're keto, and um, that can definitely screw up your program. Uh, you'll find you might have brain fog. Um, 
and you stop that natural fat burning that your body does after that long night of sleep, um, your body will naturally be burning fat in the morning, and you don't you stop that when you eat carbs. You can have some fatigue or lethargy after eating carbs in the morning, and you have a higher tendency to want more carbs as the day goes on. So um, eat your carbs at night. You know, um, again, that's more science involved about uh, levels of insulin and things like that. But uh, stated in the simplest possible terms, your fat and protein oxidation in your body slows down at night when you go to bed. But your carb oxidation actually continues at the same rate and speeds up in the morning just before you wake up. So what you want to do is you want to eat as late late into the morning as you can to to get that fat burning as much of that fat burning once you wake up to continue and then once you do start eating carbs you want to you want to lo load heavier towards evening and then um, you will actually burn carbs uh, at the same rate through the night um, so you'll be even if you're still sticking to your 20 grams daily, um, you, you know, you'll have a better fat burning overall profile if you do that. So that's why intermittent fasting is good, uh, especially when you're eating later in the morning or towards lunchtime and stopping, you know, five, six, seven o'clock at night uh, having your last meal. So just... That was question three. This is question four. Uh, what are some must-have keto items and why do you use them? So for me, uh, here's just a few because, I mean, I have a lot of must-haves. But daily, uh, some of the things that I use that make me awesome, uh, apple cider vinegar. Every single day, at least two tablespoons a day. Uh, dissolved into water with maybe some lemon uh, because you've heard me talk about this before ACV with mother uh, by Bragg because it improves insulin insulin sensitivity and I was very insulin resistant um, and I believe it helps with things like gout uh, you get that pain in your feet or your toe and starts to swell it's from uh, too much protein uh, a lot and a lot of times you start taking ACV, it'll clear right up, and it's also an appetite suppressant. So uh, that's my number one. Uh, also, uh, avocado. Avocado reduces inflammation. Has a lot of really good fat in it. I eat at least one a day because um, I love them. Three broccoli. Uh, broccoli is a go-to. Lowers your cholesterol. It's a really good source of fiber. I eat it both cooked and raw, um, at least once a day, because I'm a big salad eater. Um, number four would be fermented foods. Again, pickles, okra, kimchi, any uh, any kind of vegetable that I can find that's been fermented is good for your gut. Um, Super for digestion and, of course, regularity. And you want to look for anything that's um, like uh, there's a kefir, kefir, kefir yogurt uh, that has a huge amount of live bacteria. Live bacteria is fantastic for you. And, of course, you know, you want to keep under 20 grams uh, if you're just starting out. But I have a higher tolerance now because I'm at maintenance, so I, I eat it a few times a week because I like the way it keeps me regular. Number five, last but not least, uh, a meat is salmon. I adore salmon. It's good for your bones and your joint health. Uh, it's good for brain function, and it's full of really good omegas that you want and magnesium. Um, I eat it at least once a week. Just throw it either on the grill or in the oven for 10-15 minutes until the fat starts coming out and oh yeah love that so uh, those are some of my go-to's uh, on a weekly basis so question number five so I hate water 
Don't we all? I hate drinking water. Is there something I can drink other than just plain water? Uh, you know, I don't want to go and buy those Mio things because they got all kinds of additives in them. What can I, can I make something? Well, yeah, there's all kinds of, if you just Google, you know, um, keto drinks, a bunch will come up. And I think I have a lot on my Pinterest, um, if you go to my Pinterest page. But, uh, I mean, the easiest one is you can make a version of sort of like a lemonade, especially if you've got uh, a touch of the keto flu right in the beginning. Just uh, make a big pitcher of it. Use like four cups of water, a third of a cup of lemon juice or lime juice, whichever you prefer. Um, aloe vera juice, you can buy it in the stores. Really good for you. you add uh, a couple tablespoons of that with uh, like a quarter tea of Himalayan salt, uh, six or seven drops of stevia, liquid stevia, and then throw some ice in there. Mix that all together and just sip that all through the day. And there are your electrolytes and you're not just drinking water. So that's a good option. Um, another one is uh, Propel makes um, a water drink that has a higher amount of electrolytes. Now these electrolyte waters that they sell uh, now a lot of, you've got to be careful because Smart Water, look at the ingredients. If you look on the nutritional label and it says potassium, magne magnesium, whatever, whatever, and it's zero, um, yeah, you want it to have enough electrolytes that you're actually going to benefit from them. So they can say it's electrolyte water and they've just put like two little shakes of salt in it, but that's not what you want. Propel actually makes the only one that I've tasted that actually tastes like electrolyte water. Um, I mean, some people can't stand the taste of it because it does taste rather salty. But um, if you want the benefits of it, that's what you're looking for. So that's it for my five answers to five questions. Uh, I hope it helped you all out. And I am trying to make as many videos as I can. Um, I'm working on some more stuff. And uh, I'm hoping to do a cooking video. It's so hard to do a video uh, cooking in that tiny little dark trailer, but um, we'll see what I can do. All right, thanks y'all for visiting. Please like and subscribe. Love y'all. Bye.